criminal defense attorney Aaron J. Boria, and today I'm going to talk to you about arraignment, and arraignment specifically at the 35th District Court. Arraignment legally is going to be the same in every court. At your arraignment, that's your first hearing where you go to the court. Now, this can happen where you get a ticket with a date on it, or you get arrested and you're taken to the courthouse from the jail or from the police officer. From the jail, you could appear by video, and then by the police officer, you may appear in person. At arraignment, the judge has the job of informing you what crime you've been charged with and what the maximum possible penalty for that offense is. So let's say that you were arrested for drinking and driving in Plymouth. You would then have to be arraigned at the 35th District Court, also in Plymouth, that's where the jurisdiction is, and either a magistrate or Judge Giroux, Judge Lowe, or Judge Plakas would tell you what the maximum possible penalty is for a DUI. For a DUI, the maximum possible penalty is up to 93 days in jail and up to a fine of $500 plus costs. Now, there are other penalties for drinking and driving, and those include community service, drug and alcohol rehabilitation, drug and alcohol testing, work program, outpatient treatment, counseling, um, then there's points on your license, there's driver responsibility fees, there's the suspension of your license, the restriction of your license, it goes on and on. But the judge doesn't have to tell you any of that, he just has to tell you the maximum possible penalty for jail and court fines. So that's all he has to tell you. If you were charged with retail fraud or possession of marijuana or a felony or anything like that, the judge will formally tell you what you've been charged with and what the maximum possible penalty is. The other thing that happens at arraignment is you will be given a bond or some bond conditions with the bond. Now, a bond is a promise to return to the court. Bond conditions are things that the judge tells you you have to abide by while your case is progressing. Sometimes you can get a personal bond where you don't pay any money and you just leave the court. But if you violate the bond or the bond conditions, so you either don't show up or you violate a bond condition and a bond condition in a drinking and driving case may be don't drink and you have to test so that we know you're not drinking. If you violate that bond by not showing up or by drinking, then you would owe whatever money the judge says you have to pay. So for instance, let's say you had a bond of $1,000 personal. That would mean that you're not going to pay any money up front to get out of the courthouse or get out of the jail. But if you don't show up to court or if they, you drink and they catch you, guess what? You owe $1,000 and you're probably going to jail while the, while the case progresses. Um, other types of bond are your 10% bond. So if they said 1,000, 10%, then you would pay $100 to get out of the courthouse or get out of jail. But if you violate, then you owe the full thousand. And then there's the full amount where it's just a thousand dollar bond. And then you gotta pay the thousand to stay out. And uh, if you violate, you go to jail, you don't get your money back. So that is the first thing that happens. That is the first hearing at the courthouse is your arraignment and a bond gets set. From there, the judge will schedule either a pretrial or a probable cause conference, depending on if you're charged with a misdemeanor or a felony. Um, one thing that my office likes to do on misdemeanor cases at the 35th District Court in Plymouth is we will file some paperwork to have our client's arraignment waived. Now you can't do this in every single case, but you can do it in a lot of cases. By filing this paperwork, it saves our client a trip to the courthouse, which means they're not missing work, school, or worrying about getting the kids a babysitter or what have you. Um, and it also saves our client from having bond conditions set like the random drug testing or alcohol testing, uh, things of that nature. What's good about that is you may be saying to yourself, well, it's not a problem, I don't mind if I have to test, or I don't mind if I'm told some of these bond conditions. Sure, you don't mind, but guess who pays for that testing? You do. So if we can waive the arraignment and get a pretrial 
then we may save you a couple weeks of testing and keep some money in your pocket and you avoid the inconvenience. Then we just jump to the second hearing, which is called a pre-trial. I'm gonna post a video on the pre-trial as soon as I get a chance, but for now, remember. So if you've been charged with a crime in the state of Michigan or the city of Plymouth, you know who to call, Aaron J. Boria. 734-453-7806 or shoot me an email at borealaw at gmail.com. I am happy to fight for you.